Hi guys, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I'm Megan, the faithful fibromyalgia warrior, and I'm glad you guys have decided to come back and check out this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, it would be great if you did. And if you watch the video all the way to the end and you like it, please give it a thumbs up. So I was trying to figure out what today's video would be about. And sometimes that's really hard because, you know, I'm not some guru or expert in any way. I'm just sharing from my experiences what's worked and what hasn't. Um, living with fibromyalgia, chronic pain, Raynaud's syndrome, IBS, underactive thyroid, anxiety, and depression. All the highlights, <laughs> I have to say. But I realized that, you know... A lesson that I have to put into practice today, which I'll do shortly, and I thought this might be helpful to other people. Whether you live with chronic illness and pain, or you have someone you love who does, or you just know somebody who might, this this could be helpful. And the whole concept is about um, if I was to come up with a title for the video, well, actually, I kind of did. And it's, um, put the oxygen mask on yourself first, and then put it on your children or people around you. So, you know, it's based on the premise of, like they tell you when you get on a plane, and they go through the safety spe speech, and that's if they should lose cabin pressure, the oxygen masks will come down. And all parents are supposed to put the masks on first before they put them on their children. In other words, you have to look, care, look after yourself before you can look after other people. And that, for me, wow, that's really easy to say. And it is so hard for me to put into practice. It really is. Um, because I'm always wanting to make sure everything's taken care of for everybody else even though I need to take care of myself first because there's that guilt. Those of you who deal with these issues probably know what I'm talking about and that we often will feel guilty. I certainly do. Guilty because we can't do the things we used to do. We can't uh, do things around the house anymore. We perhaps have had to stop working, which is my case. And we feel guilty because our partner... Um, if we have one or a spouse, whatever the case may be, has suddenly has to take on a carer type of role because we can't do the physical things we maybe once did. We can't be the ones who are, you know, doing things like household cleaning. We can't get, get down on our hands and knees and scrub the corners in the bathroom. And we aren't the ones who can bend over and clean out the tub anymore. That, that comes down to the person... Um, that we are with, but like I said, whether it's our spouse, whether it's um, a partner or a roommate, um, and hopefully they are loving and supportive and kind and good-hearted, and they're more than willing to step up. But I know that there are a lot of situations where people don't have that, you know, and they're waiting, say, for uh, domiciliary care, or somebody who can come in and help with their household cleaning and cooking chores, etc., because they can't do it themselves. I'm not quite in that position. I have a very supportive husband, thankfully, and I have two grown sons, one who will be 18 at the end of the week, holy smokes, and my other son is 20, and they, will, they always help. Sometimes I have to ask them. Other times they just simply offer and they do it. But there are a lot of things that I can't do anymore. And so I get this feeling of guilt. And I feel like, well, I'll do whatever I can. I'll make sure everybody's laundry is folded or put away. Even if I don't do the laundry myself, even if I'm just helping them sort their rooms, I'll do that, right? Um, I'll make sure that food is made. I'll make sure that whatever's prepared. The only problem with that is... I often get to the point where I've done so much, just picking up after people and, you know, that kind of thing. As, as we often do as parents, we 
often find ourselves picking up after our kids. Even when they know how to do it, we, we, mothers maybe more so, we will often just, out of habit, we'll see stuff on the floor, we'll just grab it. And of course, that's not good for my back at all. Um, and for most of us with chronic pain, right? But we do it because that's just how we are. Um, we, we're used to picking up after our children from them at a very, very young age, and sometimes it's just hard to stop that. It's sort of, for me at least, it's how I show that I care, that I'm contributing because I've picked socks up off the floor, or um, I've brought, you know, a hoodie they've left in the living room. I'll put it in their room instead for them, and then they can put it away, kind of thing. You know, folding up their sheets and putting them away in the linen cupboard saying, hey guys, when you change your sheets, there's clean ones in there. That type of a thing. But the problem is, for me at least, I have I expend all this energy, right? And I suddenly feel like, oh, I've got energy and I'm flipping and flopping and bouncing around the house. And yeah, I'll make you a coffee. And sure, I'll put your mug in the dishwasher. And I feel like I get to the point where if I was to sit down, I might not get up again because all of a sudden I'm exhausted. And I'm constantly exhausted. I'm tired right now, but because I've just um, made coffee, uh, a decaf for my husband and I, I'm feeling a bit of that adrenaline rush, if you will. And part of me does feel guilty. He's, he still works full time. He's, he works from home. Um, as he would have done anyways, but especially now with COVID. So he's busy inside working. Uh, both my sons are out with friends or at the park or what have you, which is great, enjoying this British summer weather as long as it lasts. But then I am left when I finally sit down feeling drained and exhausted because I find it hard to let things go, right? If I could just let go of the sock on the floor, for example, and get my husband or whichever son left it there to pick it up later, imagine the amount of stress I would probably reduce from my life. Like I said, it's really easy to give the advice of look after yourself before you look after others. It's a lot harder to follow. And for those of you who are kind of more type A personalities like I certainly am, really, really hard. Especially if you also live with, for example, anxiety, where there's this feeling like we have to do this right now. We probably don't. You know, using the sock as the example, I could have probably left it until tonight. And when my sons were back home, just say, hey, by the way, that one's yours, I think. It's just please pick it up, put it in your room, and it would have been done. And I wouldn't have to worry about it. But, oops, sorry, it's, a, it's, an old, um, it's an old patio chair, and it squeaks when you move. So apologies for that. I'm in my backyard here in Colchester, England, so uh, I'm facing towards the back of the property that way. And what you're seeing behind me is the back of our bungalow. Um, so behind this row of shrubs, um, so to the, to the right, which would be the left on your screen, I think, just because of how it flips, um, there's a little corner, that's where my, my um, sun lounger is, and most days I will be out in it, stretched out, reading or sleeping in the sun. But because it's pretty cloudy out today, I figured eh, I'll take a break. We have some sun, it's just there's a lot of clouds as well. So, I thought it was a good day to make a video. And just to say that, look, if you're tired and you're exhausted and you're trying to push through, but you feel like you have no energy, I get it. That's what I feel like right now. That's what you're looking at, okay? Is somebody who probably did too much, even just moving around in the kitchen, putting the dishes away, you know, making sure all the garbage was thrown out, wiping down the counters, even what seems like little things that could have waited a little longer, like I wouldn't have just left it, but I could have left it for an hour, sat down, enjoyed the day, and then got to it. So, if you are like me, where you find it almost impossible to just sit and do nothing, 
I would highly suggest that you really try hard to sit and just do absolutely nothing. Honestly, even if it's just for 10 minutes, even if it's for 10 minutes, think of it as like the ultimate test, okay? I am going to be trying to do that myself because I realized I need to. I have to learn to be still and give myself the oxygen mask because as much as we, you know, should love and care and look after, you know, the people in our lives, um, we need to look after ourselves first. And especially those of us who live with fibromyalgia, chronic illnesses and pain, and other medical issues, we have to look after ourselves. So here's, here's my challenge to you guys. Try to get outside, even if it's just for 10 minutes, and honestly, just sit and do nothing. Just sit and do nothing. If you want to have some like music in the background, go for it. But I'm, I challenge you as I'm challenging myself to just sit and do absolutely nothing so that we can actually feel relaxed and look after ourselves. I think it's going to help. Anyways, guys, let me know how it goes. Um, I think I'm going to try that right now. Let me know how it goes. If you want, you can put stuff in the comments. And uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Um, that's it for today, guys. It's just, it, like I said, it was just, I think I said it was going to be a, a fairly short one. I'm going to go right now and give myself this peace and calm stillness for 10 minutes. See how it goes, okay? Without doing anything, without thinking and worrying about anything. Um, yeah, anyhow, that's it for me for right now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know I'm kind of a little bit woo all over the place in the video, but um, hey, that's just where I'm at. I, I don't want to be pretentious. I don't want to pretend. I don't want to be fake or phony. This is just, this is me. This is what I'm going through right now. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it at all, please give it a thumbs up. I really hope you subscribe. And please share this with anybody you think might bring him a laugh and a smile or just even some encouragement and let me know how your 10 minutes of doing nothing goes or you know what you did whether it was chilling out the music whether you read whether you just sat and closed your eyes and listened to nature around you let me know i'd love to hear what you have to say that's it for me for now guys um Hopefully have another video out soon, hopefully in the next few days. The weather's going to be fantastic, so you guys might be able to catch me just lounging in the, in the chaise lounge whilst I, who knows, maybe whilst I paint my toenails. I haven't decided yet. Who knows? Anyways, guys, thanks again. Love you all. Appreciate your support, and I'll see you guys in the next video.